Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Cordant and we are back for some more Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. We are currently in phrase, uh, in <laughs> We are currently in front of the hole, which is in the gullet, and this is a place where we've had several quests and several people sending us to. So we're gonna check out what this area has. Um, we have, I think, a ship captain for a quest um, for Biha. Or Bina, which is the wife of the guy that got sent into the old city. Hmm. Hot wind, redolent of vomit and mold wafts from the hole. Lovely. We have an ogre. Cool. Firna, which I'm guessing is the barkeeper. Ah, here you go. Seduzo. And this, I mean, I have so many quests, I, I <laughs> let me see if I can find the one I want. Um, no. No. God damn it. Sinking feeling. Oh, this one is also here. Find Persa. She was apparently in the hole. Uh, but I cannot find this one. No, this one. Approach Captain Seduso in the tavern in the gullet about passage for Biha and the children. So this is someone we have to talk to. What else do we have? A somewhat large tavern. Is this a Vitrak? It is a Vitrak. What the hell is a Vitrak doing among people? That's my question. So, Firna. An orland covered toe to ear, uh, toe to ear tip in sable fur leans against the bar, counting change. She gives you a wide, easy smile when she notices your approach, then slips the coins into her pocket with a wink. Hey, uh, fresh face. Welcome to the hole. Just got two rules, yeah? Keep your hands to yourself <laughs> and don't fall in. Oh, maybe it's because of that hole there? Need something? Show the medallion. <clears throat> All right, the pri okay. So the prince of Niketaka also gave us a medallion for us to investigate and see where it came from. I think from the black market. So yeah, let's show the medallion. This is mean anything to you? Whoa now, fresh face. Ain't right to go waving that thing around just wherever. I know a Mataru trap when I see one, and I'm not looking to be hmm. snared. Keep that what's it to yourself. <laughs> so we can intimidate. Or we can use diplomacy. I've been dispatched by the highest authority in Neketaka. Either comply or stand amongst the accused. Your choice. Well, it's... I guess both of these are kind of intimidation, but let's try it. Alright, Captain Fancy Britches. No need to get your bits in a knot. You want to take that medallion okay, cool. over to Delver's Row, in the black market. It's all tucked away in that creepy maze on the west end of the gullet. The narrows. Mm. Take a right the first chance you get. Then keep going forward until you see a merchant stall. Look close. There's a secret hallway behind a curtain there. That's your entrance. Sorry, I, I got distracted because I think my character just leveled up. I saw like the glow there. So it's in the narrows, and apparently the narrows is a maze. And we have to go right, then forward until we see a merchant stall. Look close, there's a secret hallway behind the curtain there. That's your entrance. Okay, cool. I'm sure I don't need to tell you this, but all the same, you'd best watch yourself in Delver's Row. The crooks there will kill you just as soon as cheat you out of everything you own. I can deal with them, I think. <laughs> if Dario doesn't gut you first. This is the second time we've been hearing about Dario. So who is he? You stick around the gullet long enough, you might find out. Okay, well, what's the story with this place? <laughs> the hole's been here so long as there's been a gullet. Though it ain't always been mine. What's the neighborhood without a place to get pissed drunk and lose <laughs> your pants? How do you end up here? Well, it's a bit of a story. See, I was born here. Right here, fresh face. Right on this counter. Wow. And I'll die here too, God's willing. That's kind of weird. I had some other questions. Of course. She spreads her furred hands wide, inviting you to continue. 
I'd like to buy something. What you need? Um, provisions. Sure, sure, sure. Berta's cooked up the best grub the gullet has to offer. It's not actual grubs, though. Probably. <laughs> You're not picky, right? Let me know if you see something that makes your stomach rumble. Okay. Please tell me you have candied nuts. God damn it. Delver Stew. And the Forgetful Knight. Yeah, so not much of interest. What kind of buffs do we get? Okay, so nothing here. Ooh, Stealth, Streetwise, and Sleight of Hand. I like this. I might actually rest to get this buff. Given that we don't have any buffs yet. And yeah, my character leveled up. Hehehe. <laughs> um, <clears throat> let's just first explore over here. But then I think I'm gonna rest. Oh, Berta, this is... Oh! My appetite has abandoned me. <laughs> Another piggy! Onyx. Okay, I prefer the name Chauncey. Perception. And plus 10 to all defense against his attacks. Okay, not bad, not bad. He's very pretty, he's black. Wait, sorry. I mean, it goes with the name Onyx, but... Yeah, he's a very cool piggy. What is this? Ember. Okay. So the... What? How did you just level up? How did you just... Or did you level up before and I didn't notice? I think that was it. <laughs> so their cook is apparently an ogre. <laughs> Very interesting. Let's steal some stuff here. Leave it to me. Why do you bother me, little kiss? This was very strange. Why wasn't the option to pickpocket? Weird. <laughs> Little kid. You enjoy working here? No. <laughs> she hawks a fat goblet of spit. It lands beside the food she's preparing and splatters. Uh... The gullet reeks of illness. The beds are too small. An imp tried to nest in my hair. <laughs> and Firna, the tavern keeper, refuses to give me more than one day off a month. How am I supposed to hunt when I am chained to this stove? Are you supposed to hunt? She crunches her face into a grimace. <laughs> Maybe I'll become a pirate. Get myself a bird and an eye patch. Oh, you should join my crew. How do you mean? She narrows her eyes and regards with a renewed interest. Uh, I actually don't need a cook, but I like the idea of recruiting more people. We've need of a cook and I admire your uh, work. I don't work for <clears throat> free. Is she a companion? Oh my god, is she a companion? A companion ogre? Because people are reacting to her. Um, I, I can do with 450. Will this satisfy you? She examines your coins for a moment. They look tiny in her giant hands, almost like a child's plaything. She shrugs. Yeah, uh, this will do. For now. Yeah. She pets her meat tenderizer thoughtfully and gives you a small nod. Okay. Full compliment. What is this? Can I click it? I cannot click it. Wait, what if I go here? Assign a crew member to all slots on a single ship. Oh, we also completed the... Blow the man down, attach your first ship upgrade, repair your ship and personal suit. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, of course. A new companion. Well, not a companion. I don't know if it's a companion. No, I don't think it is, because we didn't get um, the prompt to choose her class. Oh, Persa. Relax. In and out, no complications. Relax. We're emptying a vault, not water shaping. Oh. Martino better come through with that boat he promised. I'm sure there's a dinghy in your future. I see. So there, when we were in the... God, I cannot remember the names, man. When we were at the house... Of the Valida family, I, uh, or the Bardato family, <clears throat> there was a vault there that was pretty heavily guarded. We didn't actually go in. And these guys were t uh, talking about emptying a vault. So yeah, 
I'm guessing that's the plan here. And how did this advance? Because it wasn't a family pride quest, it was something else, a sinking feeling. Yeah, so find Persa. Zilis pointed me toward his cousin, Persa, who frequents a tavern known as the Hole Down in the Gullet. I think I found all the information I'm going to, hopefully that's enough for Zali. I mean, can I, can I confront them? Okay, well, these are thugs, so... I think I'm gonna be sending Mr. Ed there in first, and then the rest of us, in case there's combat. Okay. Sup, bitches? An armored man stands by the far wall, observing a more lightly clothed woman as she busies herself with a handful of wires. The room falls silent, and you find yourself the center of attention. We've no intent to God disturb you. <laughs> Please carry on. You're in stealth. Shut up. <laughs> don't give yourself away. Bayer, I don't know this one. She nods towards you. We ask not to be disturbed. What are you doing here? He grips his weapons and studies you closely. So we have bluff and might. Or perception and insight. Aren't you one of the Bardato guards? Well, that's the end of subtlety. <laughs> Bear readies his weapon, his features hardening in, a, hardening in a resolute expression. You told me you weren't followed. It's Ali can't know that I was here. Bad news for our new friend. Combat, combat. He clenches his jaw and advances. Bear hefts his weapon to square off with you while Persis scrambles for cover. So yeah, she was conspiring with the Bardato guards. Oh, okay, so wait, we have we have combat, that's for sure. They're all at my level, which is good. We have a priest, we have bear, we have a spell right. Cut purse burglar. So I think rogue, rogue. I think this is a rogue uh, wizard. This guy I don't know. And the priest is a priest. So, we're going to be using Mr. Ed there here. Is he in stealth? No, he's not. It looks like it though. We're going to make you aware and acute. <clears throat> and we're going to try to knock down this priest here. And in the meanwhile, Mr. Piggy will also contribute. Shoti, uh, I'm thinking maybe she could, she could debuff all of the enemies. No, I think I'm going to buff my allies instead. That should be better. Okay, so yeah. Let's see our quest here. I think I want a chill fog. Like over here. It doesn't affect it there, which is good. So let's just put it here. I think Aloth is going to buff himself up. And Shoti, she's gonna buff my back line, I suppose. Maybe I'm gonna start with this then. Yeah, and then I'll look for the the other buff there. And my rogue, Mr. Cordum, I think I'm gonna start working on the spell right. He's not that far off from my line of sight, or from my range. And an accurate wounding shot from stealth from an assassin? I'm gonna bet it's gonna hurt. <laughs> and it's also over penetrating, we can see at the top here. It deals 130% uh, damage. Okay, let's go. Shot. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, good shot. 78 damage. I was kind of hoping for more, but I'll take it. Let's go for another one, just finish him off. Everybody is circling it there, which is cool. Is he doing what he's supposed to be doing? I think he is. I think he just missed his knockdown. Mr. Piggy, you can leave stealth and just go. And Aloth has buffed himself, so... I am going to go for an exposed vulnerabilities. And like... I think this guy's gonna die right now, so I can just put it here, where I have the range for it. Okay. Oh, he's coming in. Oh, he's trying to debuff us, you bitch. He's gonna die though. Blam! <laughs> Sucker. Okay, so we're gonna swap to our pistol to not have to reload. And I think I'm going to start by killing the priest here. 
So we're gonna go for an accurate wounding shot as well on him. And then we can go for a crippling strike. We have our blessing. And I think I'm actually gonna go for something more offensive here from Shoti with the Pillar of Faith on this guy. Hey, the chances are very low though. 50% chance on average. Eh, do it, it's fine. Okay. So we landed exposed vulnerabilities on ugh, only these two, which kind of sucks. And I guess I can try out the concussive missiles because this causes the shockwave of crushing damage to foes close to the impact. So it will hurt everybody and the and the hit chance is high. We have the chill fog. I'm going to go for a blizzard. What did this guy do? Sunbeam. So it hits for fire damage. Okay. That's fine. I think we have more than enough HP. Never mind. Maybe not. Heal! Heal! <laughs> okay, good, good, good. This went south very quickly. Um... Let's try and go for the pillar again. He's fine. It makes no difference. Okay, good crushing damage from Aloth. Well, not that much actually, but not bad. Let's go for a noxious burst on all of our enemies here. Uh, hit chance, once again, not very high. Maybe start with a Miasma. Yeah. Miasma, and then we can go for a chill. Um, the poison thingy. I'm still working on the Bardato Priests. Let's just keep shooting accurate wounding shots. Okay, good. Makes no difference. <laughs> good damage from Takehu. Nice, nice. Let's go for lightning damage as well. Why not? Good shot from the rogue. I think the pillar didn't actually do much. Eder is just not able to heal. He keeps getting interrupted, I think. Let's just heal like this then. Okay, lightning damage going out. This guy's almost dead. The miasma went out. Awesome. The noxious burst should finish it off. Oh, he's trying to heal. I will have something to say about that, my friend. Blam! Dead. Shoti, let's do this. 100% chance to hit. Lovely. Very lovely. Uh, I'm gonna swap my focus to Bear now. We're gonna go for a wounding shot on him. This guy is just shooting. Uh, let's get a moonlight over here to heal up our friends. We can actually actually speed this up a bit. Is he stuck? Okay, good damage, good damage. And what else do I want? Eh, some more missiles here. On bear. Oh, 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 oh bitch, no, no. Uh, grab him. God damn it, man. He's gonna go for Aloth, but Aloth has... Alacrity of motion. So he can actually move away. Yeah. Cool. Ooh, very dead. And bear. Also very dead. Okay. So this was a... A proper fight, let's say. Not against enemies very much higher level than us. And the, the power of the assassin, I think we also just saw it... The, the spell right there, their, their wizard, he just got, well, not one shot, but two shot by my rogue. Which is very good. Vault schematics, a grimoire. Oh, I want this. Quest item. This is a crudely drawn map of the vault underneath the Bardato estate. In spite of the rough schematic, notes, timetables and arrows detail the patrol... Uh, what? Detail the patrol routes of guards with startling precision. I'll take that. 
And then just regular stuff. No special items, makes me sad. You... you killed him! Let me go and I won't say a word about what happened here. Mm. Persa's voice quavers fearfully and she's rooted to the spot as if paralyzed. The Bardato sent you, right? No need to kill me over a family tiff, eh? A lot of options. We have Intimidate. Hello, I'm the one who's going to cut your throat if I catch you anywhere near the Bardato's house. We have Bluff, the bot doesn't know about the plan and this is your one chance to kit while you're ahead. Relax, what's your part in the bot job? You're clearly not muscle. Okay, we can go for this. Yeah, just give me more info. I just check for traps. Belder and her crew are the vault crackers, not my line of work. Belda, who's Belda? This job? I'm out, it never happened. She slaps her palms in a dismissive fashion and holds them out to you. Belda's plan was for everyone to converge on the Bardato vault. You won't find me anywhere near the Bardato fortune. Can we agree that that's worth sparing my life? Hmm. Well, I am benevolent, but not really to thieves and criminals, so give me every coin you have and I'll let you live. Deal! If I can just find that damned pouch... I was kind of feeling that Shoti might have not liked this, but apparently it's fine. Persa curses and mutters to herself as she furiously digs through her pockets, finally producing a sum of coins that she flings across the gap toward you. Yeah! Uh, reputation, everything is fine, I think. Okay, cool, so we learned some stuff about a quest. We had some action, which I was aching for. Went very well, actually. And now we're gonna talk to Seduzo. This Rawatayan sits ramrod straight. On the table near her are a half-empty liquor bottle and a small porcelain cup. Both smell of anise. She looks like she's trying to blend in, but her unnatural stillness and her bright, spotless attire make her stand out like a reef fish against the rocks. Her eyes find yours. Farami! I am here, Seduzo Nui. Do we expect any foreign merchants today? Hmm. Oh, I guess she's saying foreign because this is my background, the living land. Seduzo keeps her eyes on you even as she speaks to the soldier. There is only a brief pause. We do not, Seduzo Nui. The captain shifts uncomfortably. Then state your business quickly. I want to avoid another surprise. She glances around quickly as, she, as if she expects someone to jump out of another corner of the tavern. Did you cross paths with a man named Botaro? The one who threatened me. I shall not soon forget him. She raises her cup for another sip, scowling with into the liquor. These Juana learn too many pretty words from the Valians. You cannot trust what they say. Hmm. We had pretty words before the first ship landed on Rawatai. Takehu purses his lips and balls his hands at his side. Yes, but did you speak them with such deceitful intent? Flustered, she turns away from Takehu. Yeah, and again, this guy has a lot of interactions throughout the game. What exactly happened? This fellow wanted passage on my ship. As if I were the village ferryman. She tosses back the rest of her drink a little too quickly. I told him there was none to be had. Certainly not at his price. She upends her empty cup. Then what? She refills her cup and sets the bottle down hard. You notice again that her hand is shaking. He told me he had coin. Lots of it. I did not believe him. How could a man who lives in a garbage heap have enough money for passage? Black market, maybe? She shakes her hand. Her head. So you assumed the worst and threw him to the wolves? No, you presumptuous Adirin. I assumed nothing until I saw the Swollenette. A Swollenette? A marked coin. A token of allegiance. The Principi carry them. Okay, go on. I knew then that I was dealing with a pirate. I had heard they were influential in the gullet, but I did not realize how much so. Hmm, she scowls and shudders. So was he a pirate, Botaru? I called for the guards and they dragged him away. That is the last I saw of him. I mean, if that's the case, then she's not really in the wrong. Behind the children still need passage out of the city. There's nothing I can do. 
The passenger quarters have been reserved by a dwarf named Orin. Orin. She picks a stray thread from her smooth, crisp jacket. Why do you bring this to me? Well, this could be um, a decent option if he wasn't a pirate. The gullet is rough, have pity. Pity will not pay my debts. Besides, okay. look around. I cannot take every unfortunate to Rawatai. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand that, that there's not much to be said. Um, let's just explore this option. Don't you feel bad about what happened to Botaro? What did remorse ever accomplish? Besides, this Botaro brought trouble on himself. She holds her chin high, but you catch a telltale twitch at the corner of the mouth. Yes. He should have known how to behave around civilized people. God damn it, man. This is so confusing. She nods as if convincing herself, because on the one hand, I, I completely agree with her. If he is a pirate, if he threatened her, she did the right thing. But then she says something like this, which is kind of disgusting. Tell me about Oren. He and his people are gold pack knights. Oren is... <laughs> particular. So they're paladins? She looks at her crew and they nod in agreement. Perhaps that is good. He just finished a contract to guard the Valian Luminous Mill. I hear Anamancers are also particular. Wait. So he is particular. Okay. He's upstairs. Just do not interrupt him if he's arranging things. She and their crew exchange another quick glance. What is your business with me? I just said. It's nothing I can do. Okay, okay, okay. Why do you okay, bring okay. this to me? Okay. What's your business in Nekataka? Nearly done, I hope. I sold a consignment of iron and cultural coral, and will return to Rautai with vorals, murkberries, and Andra stars. Hmm. She shifts in her chair, tugging at her conspicuously clean and bright clothes. A lot of options here. Odd that you take your business to the slums, unless you're trading illegally. This is quite true. We can also go for insight. But let's go for the roguish one. She sets her glass down with a loud clatter. <laughs> the Royal Deadfire Company would uh, frown on business in this district. But there's no harm if they don't know. She laughs nervously. Well, I won't tell the Royal Deadfire Company about your dealings here if you take Bia and the children. Shoti, do not get upset with me. Yes. She tugs at her collar and looks around to see if anyone has overheard you. Very well. I could take three more in the hold, and no more. Orin and his crew have reserved the berths. The children are small, surely you can take more. I will already have to abandon crates of cargo to make room for these three. Plus, the food and water they require. Very well. To me. The sooner we leave, the better. She shifts in her chair, looking around the tavern as if she expects someone to jump out at her. Okay, <clears throat> so let's see if we can convince this guy Oro to... I don't know, let the children go in or something. So, wait. I could only arrange passage for three since Oran is reserved. No, I want to... I want to try and get everyone in. So, Oro <clears throat> is not here. Let's see if he's above. Because I want to try and, and get everybody in the ship. Ooh. A green room? Is this trapped? Be quiet if you can. No, just a green room, okay. A pirate. Oh where there's a pick, there's a gun. It's not considered stealing. Oh <gasps> for shake and catch. Dude, the six toes cat. <laughs> Sup, dude? 20 health, resort per kill, and uh, nothing special. Okay. Oh, the Grimoire, the Grimoire. I forgot to check it. Eh. Nothing special. <clears throat> nothing special up until this point. This is awesome. <laughs> Assuming it works the same way here as it did in PoE 1. Okay, let's go. 
Okay, so no Oro here. Let me check out the outside of the, um, the upper floor. I think there was a balcony. Yeah, the, oh! A hungry dog. Deus. Constitution and health to start on kill. Okay. And a barrel of grog. Okay. Give me just one second. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's one more room. Okay, so there's Horn. Uh, when the game does something like this, like put a fighter, a priest, and a rogue in a fighter, this might mean combat. <clears throat> so let's do this. I mean, I I don't know if these are bad people, and I think gold pack knights are usually good people, but let, let's just be careful anyway. A dwarf sits before a generous and curious spread, steamed mussels arranged in concentric circles, rounds of flatbread stacked in a neat tower, and melon sliced in even triangles. Mmm, melon. Yet his attention is focused on the four cups and the bottle in front of him. He has the cups organized in an almost perfect square around the bottle, but as you look on, he leans down to adjust one. The others with him wait quietly and observe the ritual. Excuse me. He does this every time. Just have to wait. Okay. Holding his breath, he takes the bottle and measures an equal serving of wine to the cups, making three or four passes over each. His companions look on with practiced patience. Don't see why you'd spend all that time arranging your food if you aren't making it look like a funny face. <laughs> At last, the bottle is empty, and he places it in the exact center of the square. He picks it up and puts it down in the same spot twice more before he's satisfied. So, OCD? I didn't see what Sedusa was fussing about. Nothing wrong with being tidy. <laughs> Elot leans close to you, then turns back to observe. Cheers. They all take their cups and drink deeply. At last, the leader turns to you. What do you require? Okay, we can lie. I don't think there's a reason for that. Uh, I hear you've brought pa you've bought passage on Captain Seduzo's ship. Indeed, the good captain has four adequate berths, all equally sized, all facing the same direction, and she's <laughs> promised to leave promptly. Okay, so yeah, he's he's very particular about his thing. A most agreeable arrangement. He sips his wine. What would it take for you to cede your spots on Seduzo's ship? Out of the question. We're due in Tokoa for another contract, and the client has already paid the advance. He sips from his cup and immediately runs a folded handkerchief around the rim. And we have already paid Seduzo. I couldn't possibly take back the same coins I have already spent. He shivers with dread. Okay. We have an intellect option. I'm booking passage for a family, but Seduzo only has room for three of them, so they'll be split. Oh, so we're we're <laughs> we're taking advantage of his OCD here. His hand jerks so violently that he splashes a few drops of wine on the table. <laughs> I think it worked. He mops them up, a rigid and pained expression on his face. And you'll be stuck with half of them for the whole journey. Won't that be odd? <laughs> <laughs> that will not do. That will not do at all. Awesome. He's still dabbing at the spilled wine, but something brittle has crept up into his frown. His companions shuffle nervously. At last, Oren pushes back from the table and looks up at them. To Queen's birth, quickly. We must find a more suitable ship. Yeah. The gold pack knights file out together. Okay, cool. I guess if this, if this were an evil playthrough... I could maybe just kill them to make to make room, uh -huh. but I, I don't think it made Happy sense in this one to actually kill them. They're not evil or anything like that. Some jewels and money. Okay. Uh, let's go talk to Seduzo then and see what she says. 
Let me just check something here real quick. And back. So, we're gonna go to Seduso, the lady over here, and we're gonna tell her that there is no longer a need to, uh, uh sorry. Those rooms are no longer occupied. What is your business with me? Orden won't be traveling with you anymore. She eyes you suspiciously, the soldier with her shrugs. That is convenient for you. But never mind. If there's trouble, I'm staying out of it. That is no trouble. The births are paid for. You can send your friends as long as you promise not to make trouble for me. Mm -hmm. She glances from side to side, checking to make sure no one is listening. Just do it soon. I don't want any mess you've made to spill onto my decks. She looks at her crew and makes a twirling motion with her finger. Okay, so I guess we... We got this done. And this should conclude our business in the hole. Let me just check the quest here. I can deliver the news to BA in the home in the gullet. But I kind of want to look for Botaru first, right? Because it's also part of the quest. Okay, so it says here I can only arrange passage for three, but then she agreed to take Bia and all the children. Okay. So, cool. We shall go outside. Let me just quick save this. And we're going to talk to, um, to Bia. Well, not Bia. The oh, cutscene. A man saunters over to you with a jagged smile. <clears throat> he's got a long crooked scar on his forearm and he's rolled his sleeve up to flaunt it. You must be new. Lucky for you, we have a special rate for newcomers. A bag of coppers in exchange for your life. Yeah, this is what I expected to see <laughs> in an area such as this. He brandishes a knife. One of his companions grins widely enough to show you all of his missing teeth. Let me see. I'm not sure if these are all part of the group, but if they are, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Might not be too bad. But the way they're all gathered around you, leaving their own backs exposed, tells you they haven't been here long either. Okay. We can use Bluff or we can use Streetwise. You're newer than I am, which means you're poaching on someone else's territory. Told you. One of the other punches the leader's shoulder. The thugs look at one another and exchange a few panicked whispers. It seems we've made a mistake for give and forget, no? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so sure, my friend. He smiles, backing away. Oh no! They hurry off and disappear back into the crowds. Oh. Okay, so do I get experience for this? I don't. <clears throat> okay, give me a second. I don't like people ambushing me and then just getting away. Let's try this again. Yeah, but this time, let's let's be a little bit smarter maybe <laughs> and just send it there in. Okay, so yeah, the same thing as usual. You must be new. I, I, okay. I didn't stealth, but that's fine. Let's get this over with. Yeah, I don't like you trying to intimidate me, so screw you, bitch. Can we, oh yeah, we can stealth, nice. So we have it there here, who's gonna be taking the brunt of the damage, as usual. And I think I'm gonna wait for them to come over here to get a, a ch well, a kind of a choke point going. Mr. Piggy comes over here. Okay, so wait. Everybody comes like here. Piggy, over there. Okay, we can speed this up a little bit. And what do they have, by the way? They have a bruiser, which is casting something. I don't know what it is. Thug, cutthroat, brawler, and bruiser. Okay. I don't know if he, if he has a pistol or something. Oh, I still have my pistol. God damn it, I forgot to, to swap it. Well, accurate wounding shot. Uh, Shoti, give us a blessing, please. We can even make it a, a more powerful blessing, maybe. Like this. Uh, this guy... 
I guess you can give everybody the moon's light. Just so we can get some health regeneration going in case we need it. Oh, it's such a small area though. Still, I think it's fine. Like this. A lot, buff yourself. And I think we're fine. Okay. Let's go for tactical barrage. And try to knock this guy down. Mr. Piggy, you can leave stealth. Go far. Oh, we took a bunch of damage from my rogue. Lovely. Shoot him again. Piggy, go. No, Shoti, stop it. Okay. So now they're all getting clumped up here. So I'm actually going to use Tekehu to cast a chill fog in this region. We're going to get Shoti to cast a Devotions for the Faithful. And I think I'm going to do it... I can't really amplify it that much. But like this should be good. It still hits most people. Except a lot. Eh, it's fine. So do this. And a lot is going to do... Expose vulnerability, I think it's fine. Yeah, I like that. And then we shall see. Or actually, sorry. We're gonna go for the Miasma. And then expose vulnerabilities. Yes. Okay, good shots. This guy is nearly dead. Awesome. Uh, I'm gonna stick with the pistol, because why not? And I'm gonna start working on maybe this Brawler here. Not sure which of them are, are the weakest ones, but... We shall find out. Okay, that is taking some damage. Uh, let's actually heal. Okay, we have some good effects coming from Takehu. Uh, let's go for a Blizzard, which will reduce their action speed and also just hurt them. <clears throat> Perfect. Uh, try and knock down this guy. You shouldn't be here, lady. Just get away from there. <laughs> Where are you going, bitch? He's going for my rogue. Okay, so we have Devotions for the Faithful. We're gonna get Shoti to tank this guy. Oh, makes no difference. Yep. Okay, so you knock this guy down. Good. Oops. Accurate wounding shot here. Can you penetrate? Yes, you can. Awesome. Go for a crippling strike. Mr. Piggy is tanking. Awesome. Expose vulnerabilities. Yeah, we're fine, we're fine. Vulnerabilities have been exposed. I kind of want to use this. But with this lady over here, I don't feel very safe doing it. I think I'm going to go for the tentacles. <clears throat> I have to reach up closer, but... Oh, well. Okay, so Shoti is tanking. Uh, let's actually try this one. A blessed harvest, since this guy is low on HP. God damn it, we missed. Okay, blizzard out. Let's go for some lightning damage here. Or can I buff my party? 4 slash armor rating. Oh man, the range is so short. Now well, let's let's help Shoti. It's fine. No prisoners. Okay, some good shots. We have some tentacles. Uh, Mr. Piggy, you are not grabbing the people we need. But I think we're still fine. Uh, this guy is gonna die. I'm gonna go for a accurate wounding shot on this one. And Takehu... I guess you can cast a Nature's Mark to lower deflection. Sure, go for it. 100% accuracy. Yeah, buddy. Okay. So this guy should be very weak. Yeah, he has 25 deflection at this point. You are very dead. Oh, there's more. I completely forgot about, about these in the back. Uh, we're going to swap to our Arquebus. Accurate wounding shot there. Piggy, go for this one. Oh, is everybody stuck in the tentacles? That's silly. Oh my god, yeah, nice shot, man. Crippling strike here. Uh, yeah, that can't move. Can you escape? 
Jesus, 46 damage just like that. He's aiming for a tentacle because he's dumb. Do this. Uh, Shoti, let's withdraw a lot, please. Okay, good. He's down. A lot is safe. Let's work on this one. And this should be it. Blam, 61 damage and dead. Lovely, my friend, lovely. Yeah, so the tentacles can actually also be used to maybe block the path for enemies. In this case, it blocked my path, but <laughs> I guess it can also work in our advantage. Yeah, so it's 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 worth taking this. I'm not sure how much experience we gain by doing this. Maybe we don't even gain any experience. Eh, still. I enjoy fighting and I do not enjoy people trying to ambush me, so this feels right. Nothing is lost. The search for Ukaizu. I'm gonna read this because I'm curious about this Ukaizu thing. Excerpted from Nothing is Lost, the collected journals of one Amora wave chaser. The Ranga's men came to collect my portion of prize share this morning and I had nothing to give them again. I make no money for the tribe, though I am always in my little ferry boat, Gregal, carving through the waves. At night, I get no sleep. Waitaro asks me to conserve the lamp oil to come to bed, but I can't. Not until I find it. I know it's out there, the lost city of Ukaizo. So yeah, this is the one that is below the sea, right? Ukaizo is a mythical island rumored to be somewhere in the Deathfire Archipelago. Some legends regard Ukaizo as the wellspring of Wana culture. Others tell of riches beyond measure. All agree that Ukaizo vanished after cataclysmic storms and volcanic eruptions blotted out the horizon, but it remains to be seen if these tales possess an echo of merit or simply romanticize an ancient fantasy. Yeah, so this is also what the two Omawa women in front of Archimedes mansion want. They want to know about the location for this. On every chart and map of the dead fire I've found, whether Juana, Valin or Awatayan, there is a gap. An empty space where so much of our history should be. Did it burn to ash and cinders in the cataclysm? Did it sink below the waters, at uh, the waves? Does Ngati clutch it to her breast at the bottom of the sea? Perhaps it's lost and wandering like me, unmoored, looking for a home it can't remember, but for, uh, but for which some insistent longing burns in its chest, an ember always smoldering, a little fire to push it on. Why Taro wants me to give it up, but how can I? On mornings when the sky is so clear I can hardly catch my breath for the beauty of it. I think I see it out there, shimmering in the brightening blue light. Is it a taunt or a beckoning? Would I be able to tell the difference? I asked the fisher folk where they return when they, uh, with their catch at sunset. Tibere, I say, did you see anything? Or you, my body? Well, how about you, Puira? They avoid me now. Waitaro says they're busy, but I know they think I'm tide sick and sun addled. The way Puri's lips curl in disgust when I approach, the way Tiberi's eyes seem to, re seem to see right through me, I know. They won't have to suffer me much longer because tomorrow I'm, asking Gre I'm taking Gregal and sailing north. Someone has to chase the old tales, so I will. Okay. Let's take it. And... Yeah, I don't think I want to go to Bia's home just yet. Because I want to try and find Botaru first. Uh, let me just check here. Because I forget which is the, the, the quest. God damn it, which is it? Lighted path. Ah, all aboard. Yeah, I offered to look for Botaru in the old city. Okay. So I think before we go there, I want to see what's up with Delver's Row. Because now we know how to reach it, apparently. And it's through the maze in the narrows. So, the lady had said... I learned that Elver's Road can be accessed via secret alley. The alley is concealed behind a curtain in a merchant stall in the narrows. A complex of underground streets connected to the glass. Uh... Okay, yeah. Enter the narrows, turn right, then go forward until I find the merchant stall. Okay, so right, forward, merchant stall.
quick save. <laughs> you enter a dim alleyway that reeks of urine and torch smoke. A long passage stretched to your left and right. Shadows move in the guttering torchlight, but they are nothing more than shapes at this distance. The shatter and bustle of the gullet continues behind you. Uh, so yes, let's go right. You trudge along the darkened passage and reach an intersection. The, tunnels branch, the tunnel branches off to the right. You hear the distant murmur of voices down the darkened path, but see no one. Go forward. Aha! On your left is an abandoned merchant stall displaying cheap jewelry. The path continues ahead. Let us inspect the merchant stall. And with me. Laid out are various trinkets made from junk. Necklaces strung with fish bones and shoe buckles and bracelets made with shards of broken glass. But the curtain sways and flaps as if stirred by a draft. You twitch it aside and discover a secret passageway. <laughs> On your left is an abandoned merchant stall that, Oh, sorry. Go through the curtain behind the merchant stall. You check the tunnel one more time to make sure no one is watching. Then, you slip behind the curtain and into another passageway. You're walking along when several hooded figures materialize out of the darkness. Not so fast. You gotta pay a toll if you wanna visit Delver's Row. Uh... And diplomacy. Good folk, open markets are vital to a healthy economy. Will you turn away a paying customer? Last time I came through there was a man with a scar. I paid him. This is bluff. I think I like this option. Yeah. They shrug and stand aside. I mean, everybody's scarred down here, so... <laughs> You continue on, and the rough stone changes to smooth cobbles under your feet. When lamplight shivers ahead, as yellow and tremulous as fear itself. Before you is a narrow cavern that rides with shadows and echoes with the music of jingling coins. Enter Delver's Row. Woohoo! We have found it, my friends. Trade Secrets. Investigate Delver's Row. I have located Delver's Row, but I still don't know how the black market is supplied. Showing the princess medallion to any of the merchants could offer me a lead to more information. Oh right, harsh medicine as well. Dario the Lean sounds like the authority in Delver's Row. Getting closer to him might help me understand how the black market functions. Okay. <clears throat> so... Yeah, this should be a peaceful area. Blade in the dark. I'm gonna steal everything from the criminals. As you wish. Gimme. I'll see it done. Gimme. This one. Whoop. I should have actually rested at the hole to get the stealth buff. But I forgot. Yeah, it still works. Kinda. I would like to rob her as well, though. Let me see. I have the stealth boots. Maybe this will be enough? Let's just see. We can all appreciate Chauncey in the meanwhile. <laughs> yeah, no. I would need more stealth. I think for this, I might just go back to... Um, the hole, rest, and then come back. An Orlan woman stands over a table laden with herbs and spices. She mixes them without looking at her work, pausing now and then to raise a sprig or file to her nose. You realize she is blind. It's the smell of cardamom that drew you, no? Or perhaps the sting of fresh pepper. Or maybe you seek something with a stronger bite. She swivels her ears, but her cloudy eyes do not find you. Hmm. What do you sell? Food, of course, and supplies for the road. Though most here come to me for poisons and venoms. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking for medicine to cure Drowner's lung. Then you'd best ask elsewhere. Okay, she leans close and lowers her voice. But careful. If the Mataru Overseer hears there's a sickness, might be he has more questions for you. 
She raises her brows over sightless eyes. Any idea where I could sell an expensive medallion? Ernesto deals in such things. His shop is further down, next to the lift. Okay. And what do you have? I have plenty. Though, if you're buying poison and ailment, mind you store them separate. Ailment. Do you have candied nuts? Man, the candied nuts have been like the hardest thing to find in this entire game. Jesus Christ. I know I leveled yes, up, game. I know. Stop telling me. <laughs> oh, man. There's so much stuff to steal here. Looking for something to sharpen the senses to help you leave your sorrows behind? I'll go what you need. Okay, let me see what you have. I think he has like drugs and buff thingies. Yeah, just a whole lot of drugs, I think. And a solution is ingredient. I think this is used also to enchant our weapons and armor and stuff. Okay. Did I want this? Can I have that? Ooh. What is it? Of course. Wait. No, 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 no. Shh, go away. Go away, lady. Roparu. I want this. Leave it to me. Yeah. Nice. What is this though? Oh. Ooh. Yeah, I'm loving this area already. There's a door here. Mechanic skill too low. Oh, you utter bitch. Final armor, rope and grappling hook. Rubies. Uh, sorry, this I'll one. Deal with this. It's finished. Drowner's lung medicine. Oh, Drowner's lung medicine. Sorry, I, I, I read the name, but I didn't even process it. Where there's a pick, there's a way. Hmm. So twelve difficulty. My total mechanics are eight because of my party assist and my own skill. I think if I use Thief's Putty, it might be enough. Okay, let's see what we have here first. Let me quick save this in case I, I get into trouble. I'll deal with this. Yes. Done. Give it to me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Not a chance. Oh, I cannot close the door. Ah, oh, goddammit. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I want to see if I can find the key to that. Assuming there's a key. Well, take care. Before I consume my thief's putty. Okay. Okay, this just looks like an a public Our area. Our in Defiance Bay needs another shipment of Sveth. Not so loudly, but send it at once. Okay, so this is Ernezzo, which is what the lady said, that he would probably know where we could sell the medallion. Man, there's a lot of stuff here to rob. Yeah, but I, ca I, ca I cannot do it, right? Yes. He's drunk, I though. I, see me coming. I have absolutely no faith that I can do this and pickpocket, but I'm still going to attempt it. Yeah, there's just no chance at all. <laughs> okay. So, Ernezzo. Quick save. Ernezzo has not seen you before. You must be new. New or very good at disguises. <laughs> the man chuckles. He peers at you through half-moon spectacles. His face is hidden behind a thick but well-groomed beard, and his eyes constantly dart between you and the doorway. At last, they find Takehu. Another young water mage. Come, see Ernezzo's wares. You must spend that extra coin on something. <laughs> he winks. I... forgive me. Do we know each other? A cussy, it seems not. The mistake is mine. His grin recedes into his beard. He turns back to you. But how did you hear about this place? Wait, no. 
do not tell me. Sometimes it is better not to know. There is something I can get for you, yes? Tell me quietly. He leans in. Well, first let's check out the supplies before... In case this triggers a fight. Of course. Only do not tell anyone where you got them. Ooh. Garari Curus. Ten armor. Ooh, ten ar Legendary. God. This is quite good. 10% of incoming hits converted to graces from weapons. I like this one. Resistance to might afflictions. Or 15% of hits turned to graces. Minus 5% damage taken from weapons. Minus 5 damage. Okay. This is an interesting armor piece, for sure. Then he has some fine and exceptional stuff. He has some bombs. Caltrops. Ooh, a unique Arquebus. The Red Hand. Exceptional. Inaccurate. Veil piercing, exceptional. Double Barrel. Fires two shots before reloading, but has a reduced range. Fires two shots before reloading. That could be very powerful. Because this, this essentially means that you are doubling the DPS from the weapon. Hmm. No rest for the wicked. 1% damage dealt and received on kill until rest. Ah, uh, okay. It also increases damage, but damage taken as well. I like this weapon very much. So... Guilty Conscience. 2% damage dealt and received in... Okay. So this is even more of a glass cannon. You can go up to 40% damage increase in damage taken. <laughs> Seems kind of dangerous. Or Unburdened Soul. Damage dealt on kill only. Not on... Uh, not damage taken. Okay, cool. Then we have Double Tap. Destroy lower level vessel on second consecutive hit. Eh... Yeah, uh, I forgot. I still need to investigate how, how this lower level thing works if you have everything scaled up. And Twin Slugs. Knock back target within 4 meters on scoring a hit. I like it. I like this weapon very much and we can even purchase it. Okay. Okay. So yeah, um, you know what? It's time for me to actually end this episode. So I am gonna do this here before we, we talk about the medallion because it might lead into either a combat or maybe like a long dialogue. So we're gonna keep that one as a cliffhanger for the next episode. <laughs> so right now I'm just gonna do my typical save here, 24. And I just want to thank everyone for being here in the channel with me, watching some Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. I hope you guys are enjoying the game thus far. I certainly am. I'm very much liking this area of Delver's Row and the Gullet. I always like these these areas. I don't know why. Um, uh, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, any suggestions, leave a comment below. If you guys are enjoying the content, consider subscribing for more. There's videos coming out every single day. And I hope to see you all in the next episode. Until then, stay safe, everyone. <laughs>